dollars. <laughs> Um, so I don't actually know how I'm feeling right now standing in front of this thing. Um, and we got like this cowboy here. A cowboy in name only. Never actually seen a cow. This is my party hat. And that's my party rig. This is so cool. This is why I love King of the Hammers. What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. We have a very interesting build here. We got my buddy Tate here, who actually built this. Um, I don't even, I, I don't know how I feel about it. All I know is that I, just from here, it just looks so badass. <sighs> it's badass till you drive you, it. You kind of have to take a deep breath when you see this thing. I mean, like, we're out here in the middle of Lake Bed. We, were, we started our uh, little journey in Hammertown, and I had a ride in it for maybe like 100 feet. You got out as quick as you could. No, well, in that 100 feet, I could not believe how many people were taking pictures of us, pointing, not laughing, pointing and taking pictures because uh, they think it's cool. I, I really think it's cool. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Like, what's the story behind this? This is actually a very special this car. This is a special car. This has a, this has a, long, a long history. Um, when we ran the Gambler 2017, uh, I had reached out to Jesse Combs and uh, she just couldn't be more excited about coming out and they, they filmed an episode of her show, The List. ended up amazing and I went and bought a Miata with the intent of just slapping on some big mud tires but as things happened they just got out of hand and then we ended up with a, a fully built long travel Miata which looks like a million bucks but actually it runs it runs terribly which is kind of adds to the whole part with her uh, leaving us now it's kind of it's 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 hard but it's also one of those things that we have to kind of you know celebrate her and that was that's something I think she'd really enjoy the first time I actually met Jessie was here out on the lake bed. She loved this race so much. Oh, I, I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times we would really go out of our way to follow her, um, especially you know with our friends from MagnaFlow. We would always try to get as much content as we could of her. I think even the last one of the last uh, things that we had a chance to shoot was her flipping over in back door. Oh yeah, you know? last year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Um, you know, that, that's kind of the fun story to tell. You know? uh, yeah, she, she has a good laugh and about it. And trying to chase her down was nearly impossible. Yeah. I mean, uh, if we go out and ride, maybe race mini bikes together, I, I couldn't, she'd just disappear off into, the, into nowhere. You, there's no catching her. It was super cool for me to kind of watch her go from, you know, doing uh, stock class, EMC class, you know, eventually making it up to 4400 class. And you know, she likes to race everything. And definitely it's just so cool to see that uh, there's still kind of like a piece of history from Jesse, just still driving around, you're taking care of it, and you're, you're, you're actually bringing it home in, in a way. Yeah, you know, for sure, but that, that's how we live, that's how we live forever, is right, the stories that get told about us. And so, like, I think if, if anybody was talking about me on a, out on the lake bed, you know, years from now, uh, I'd be pretty happy about that too, so. It, it's, it's tough to talk about, but you know what? Can you, if, if you could fill us in a little bit about Gambler, because you actually run the Gambler 500, yeah. which by the way, I need to do one of them. I need to get on one. Dude, you, you absolutely, there's so much I, fodder. I think I your head to. would explode. My head would explode and 
you know the thing is there's so many cars like this that are so cool that I, I just want to tell the story of those cars yep. you know this one has su such a special story to us and to you and to everyone the whole car community but I know there's some awesome builds. So tell us a little bit about the Gambler 500. Uh, yes, yeah, so the Gambler 500 started a lot like the King of Hammers did. I mean, there was just a group of, you know, about 20 of us. Uh, we all decided that we'd go get $500 cars and shoot out over the mountains in Oregon and uh, camp and, you know, have some beverages and then wake up the next day and go back and do it again. It was never supposed to be a big production. We weren't trying to sell it. We weren't trying to get sponsors or people to attend it. If anything, we we're trying to keep it kind of under the radar. Uh, and then we ended up three years went by, had a ton of fun, and then uh, we ended up uh, having a video go viral, kind of on accident. And it got 40 million views, and uh, all of a sudden, everybody in the world said they want to come out and you know and play with $500 cars. And so instead of say no, I really just say yes to everything. And so we said okay. And then uh, we expected to have a couple hundred cars, and then 850 showed up. We had 1,500 people, 2,000 people. Uh, and, and it was it worked and what we had to do though is we, we in, instead of tightening things up and charging a bunch of money for it uh, we said well if you're gonna come out and do this thing you can still do it for free but yeah uh, we you're also gonna do a trail cleanup so for the, one of the contingent things that you do on the gamble it's actually a competitive trail cleanup you have to pick up trash along the way and so we're actually the largest trail cleanup in the world uh, this last year we picked up 300 cubic yards of garbage out of the Oregon desert and then we have about 100 locations that are just locally organized through people who anybody who wants to go do it. Uh, and so over three years we're, we're, we're working on, I mean, on nearly 2 million pounds of garbage we've cleaned up. So wow. it's a big deal. For those of you guys saying that this is bad for the um, environment, no, they're saving the environment. Sir, please. You, you got to. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. If you're going to go use public land, then you got to kind of give yeah. back too. That's that's instead of paying taxes or. This is our land, and we enjoy it, and we'll also take care of it. Yeah. That's really, really awesome. That's super cool. So. And I got a sticker for you. Oh. That's some, this thank is actually you. that's our nonprofit. That's our cleanup gang. Oh, I the like Sons that. The Sons of Smokey. Now it's grown to something insane. Like now, how many people did you have on your last? No, we last last year about five thousand people, and so uh, 2,500 cars. Some of them are recovery vehicles, you know, like your FJ Cruiser, uh, and those guys come out and they built Jeeps and stuff. But then, uh, but then, yeah, everything from Geo Metros to lifted limousines. Uh, our, our our rule is is fun is greater than rules, and so we don't want to have put constrictions on people what they want to do with price. You're celebrated by bringing the cheapest thing, and it's nice that you really can't cheat at that. You know, you show up with the biggest piece of garbage, then you ostensibly won. Uh, but if you wanted to spend a bunch of time, money building the car that you always wanted, then we're not gonna, you know, cry foul for that either. So if we can just kind of go over this a little bit, yeah. just tell us uh, oh, yeah. some of the things that you've done to modify this Miata. This is definitely, I couldn't, I mean, Mazda probably never envisioned an off-road Miata like this. So that's, that's exactly what this is supposed to be. Like my, my, my kind of version of how this, in my mind, how it frameworks is, is that a, uh, there was a time warp in the 70s, a time warp opened up and they, and the, and the, and they found a, a 91 Miata and they went to go down and race Baja, which is why it's actually got a, it's got a Parnelli Jones uh, livery on it. This whole paint job is based on one of his Can-Am cars. And then, and then so they're racing, they're winning, they're winning everything in, in the early 70s of Baja and desert racing. And then it gets banned and outlawed. And so they banned it and they, put, and they slammed it in a, they hit it in a barn. And so, and then that, that's when I, when I found it. And that's why it just kind of looks crummy and used up and, and, and off. So there's, there's so many different juxtaposition of things. And that's what's, what makes things interesting is when you take something and you do something it wasn't intended to do. Um, so, you know, anybody, there's a lot of race trucks out here. Uh, but there's only one Miata on Super Swampers. <laughs> and these are actually really interesting wheels too. Yeah, no, I mean, they're 14s, but I keep them clean. I don't know, I like, I like the idea of the, of, the, of the spokes on there. It's just it's another thing. I was like, well, that is silly and stupid, so we obviously have to do it. <laughs> I love it. So uh, what did you actually do to modify it, to, to get it to work like this? So it's, it, I bought it as a bone stock, 250,000 mile Miata, just, just about all used up. It was stinky, the, the, root, the top leaked. But then we just started tearing it down. It's got the stock hookup points. So everything, everything from suspension ends is just all Miata. So we got the long travel that Paco Motorsports makes. So upper, lower control arms, coilovers and then obviously the uh, the tie rod extensions and then we've got custom drive shafts in the back 
But other than that, it's still got the bone, the bone stock, one six. We'd like to do a K swap on it. So I need to, I'm not, I'm not very talented in that department. So I got to find somebody to help me out on that. That's um, going to be pretty epic. I mean, in terms of power wise. I think it's the only option at this point. We're talking about diesel, you know, but we'd, I'd have to cut up the hood. And obviously I don't want to touch the 88 on there. So yeah, I think power, and I don't want to run a turbo out in the desert. That's, that's problematic too. So I think the K-Swap's the only way to go. I love that you kind of go so into detail about the story of this thing. Yeah, you gotta have a backstory, an origin yeah. story, right? It's like a superhero. Like every car has got its own, uh, you know, identity and, and well, anything that was built before 2000, I guess, does because everything else, everything now is boring. And then you got a spare tire holder. Yep, that was your antique plates too, by the way. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Who would ever thought? So that's kind of one of the things um, a lot of people would say, would cry foul when they see this, that they'd be like, hey, you ruined this car. No, it was already, it was on its last leg, yeah. right? Okay. And it could have been, taken to the junkyard who knows it could have been junked right there and then but you actually saved it and gave it a second life well that's when you know you're doing anything right when everybody screams at you because gamblers say that's too nice to be a gambler it didn't cost five hundred dollars and then other people on the other side might say i ruined a miata which that's just a stupid thing to say you yeah. know you can't ruin a miata <laughs> uh anyway, yeah we like i like slam miatas lifted miatas stock miatas and they're probably oh they're fun too i love this thing man i love it i absolutely love it all right so Let's see what you can do. Maybe you can do some donuts or yeah, we'll see something here in, in the middle of the lake bed. I know you won't hit anything because there's nothing here. And maybe, I don't know, would you let me drive it? Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah. my God. It's only, it's only running on two cylinders right now. Well, it's, it's the, all cylinders run, but uh -huh. the two middle ones are kind of sharing compression, so it doesn't make a ton so of power. So potentially it's putting out, what, 50 horsepower? Oh, on a good day. <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up to the moon and drop the clutch and just see what happens. All right, let's see. <laughs> Should I drive it first so I don't break it? You can? Yeah. I, I promised Zach that he could drive it when we had it down at the dock, but then I burnt the clutch out. And then, so really, actually, you should be afraid that I'm going to break it. Okay, okay. So I'll, I'll drive it first, and I'll, I'll give you my impression on it. Okay. <laughs> or you could ride it with me. I don't know. Is it going to get a good a, is a, a Doug score? Or a, a, Larry, a Larry score? Is that what you're going to uh, call it? A Larry it? score. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna drive this thing. I've driven a couple of Miatas before, uh -huh. but nothing like this. So it drives worse than those ones. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Gotta be careful of the paint, you know, don't wanna damage anything. You know, this is um, a very historic car. Jesse Combs drove this in the Gambler 500. Safety oh. first. Yeah, I gotta fix something for you too. Uh, the latch is dangling there, and I don't want you to get caught. <laughs> there. Uh, the key's about to break in half as well, so. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah. Oh, but, you gotta... but it does. Put in the other one. Yep. There you go. <laughs> You're a pro. You've been in one of these before. <laughs> nice. I don't want this. Dude, one. this thing has so many miles. Oh, yeah. She she starts right up. She purrs. Two cylinders. <laughs> Oh! Wrap it up. You gotta wrap it up. Oh my up. god. Clutch, keep going. Oh my god. <laughs> you let me break it? No, I, no, you can't break it. You have to wait, break it. I have to. Like, I, I can't just engage. That's what Toyota does, right? You 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 use something until you break it so you make it better. Yeah, so that's fine. Just slam it down to build up RPMs. Okay.
silly. I love this thing so much. Larry asked me to film him do some donuts. Let's see what happens. That was um, incredible. Good. I don't even know what to say about that. Oh, I'm, like, so, I'm so happy we got to do this. It, it excites me so much that I get to feature cars that are across the board, just completely different. Like I've had a chance, for example, to rip around in the new roof CTR2, Ooh. you know? And then I'm ripping around in this. Yeah, totally different. Well, both of them. Both of them give me just as much excitement. Is that bad? I mean, we have a 800,000 euro car, right? Yeah. And then you have something that's $500. Yeah. They give just as much excitement. And that's the thing, we're car guys. We love everything. Because they, 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 it could kill you. You know that this, this could uh, either speed in the roof or just maybe from tetanus if you get the wrong piece on this one, but. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Dude, thank you so much for bringing this out and thank you so much for really keeping car culture alive, saving the planet, yeah. all of that. Yeah. And also, plus, what, one of the things that we didn't talk about is that you actually are running a racing series here oh, yeah. at King of the Hammers. It's called Hoopty X. Hoopty X is yeah. our new, uh, I'd say, since the gamblers about navigating and exploring and picking up, Hoopty X is about flogging old cars and, uh, and racing and, you know, it's run what you brung, minivans old ambulances, just geometros, whatever it is. It's just all about seat time and, and enjoying these things that are they're made to have fun. So. so you guys actually have a short course here out at Hammer Town, yep. right? Yep, yeah, uh, Saturday, uh, we're gonna be down there on the short course, this fully sanctioned Ultra 4 event with, with everybody. So, you know, daily drivers and just whatever junk you got. Fun thing for me is, this is my ninth year following King of the Hammers, okay? And I've seen it grow. I've seen all the races get added. Like first thing that I saw get added was the UTV race. Yeah. 
right? And we followed the first year of that, and then uh, of course they added uh, the trophy trucks, and then now the motorcycles are back. Yeah. And this year is the first year of the Hoop DX, right? Yeah. So it's like I, I love following the history of this event, and uh, the fact that you guys are running alongside of these million dollar trophy trucks hilarious and all of these rock crawlers makes me so happy so thanks again and that's a wrap <laughs>